Good morning everyone, myself, Dr. P. Tushara, first year resident from D.Y. Patil College Research Institute and Hospital, Kolapur. I thank IRIA for giving me this opportunity. I thank my mentors, Dr. Pradeep Patil sir and Dr. Pramod V. Nagure. My topic for paper presentation today is Role of Magnetic Resonance Imaging in Evaluation of Carcinoma Cervix. Introduction. Cervical cancer forms 16.5% of the total cancer cases in the Indian women and is the second most common type of cancer. Multifactorial causation. The potential for prevention and to treat it poses makes cervical cancer an important disease for detailed studies. Learning objective to find out the efficacy of MRI in finding out the tumor size, involvement of the parametrium, involvement of the pelvic side walls, and adjacent organs nodal status to correlate MRI findings with FIGO staging of carcinoma cervix. Materials and methods. This was a hospital based study, prospective study carried out at the Department of Radio Diagnosis in Dr. D.Y. Patil Medical College Research Institute and Hospital, Kolhapur. A total of 30 patients were studied, mostly referred from Department of Gynecology and Surgery. Study employs 1.5 Tesla MRI scanner. Age distribution among 30 patients selected, 3 were below the age of 40 years, 9 patients were from 41 to 50 years, 8 were from 51 to 60 years, and 10 patients are above 60 years of age. Here is the graph showing the age of the patient distribution. Common presenting symptoms include the abdominal pain, bleeding PV, and white discharge. Among the three, bleeding PV shows the more incidence of 93.3%. Menstrual status. 13 premenopausal women and 14 postmenopausal women and 3 post hysterectomy women were considered. Here's the percentage graph. Uh, in the histopathology, squamous cell carcinoma is seen in 27 patients and adenocarcinoma in 3 patients. The results out of the positives of 30, histologically proven are in stage 1, 0. In stage 2, out of 80 positives, 7 were histologically proven. In stage 3, among 9, 7 were histologically proven. In stage 4, 13 of 30 were histologically proven and sensitivity shows 100%. A 70-year-old female patient came with the chief complaint of abdominal pain, bleeding per vaginum since 6 months. Here we can see the soft tissue signal intensity in the cervix. Mm, causing the cervical sten canal stenosis and secondary hydrometra or pyometra with adjacent right parametrial involvement stage 2b. A 65-year-old female patient came with the chief complaints of abdominal pain bleeding per vaginum since 6 months. Here we can see an L well-defined soft tissue signal in intensity lesion which is heterogeneously predominantly in hyperintense on T2 or STIR showing Diffusion restriction noted arising from the cervix extending superiorly up to internal os, inferiorly involving the anterior and posterior fornix and infiltrating lower one third of vagina. Laterally, breach of cervical stroma is seen. This is stage 3A. A 65-year-old female patient came with the chief complaint of bleeding per vaginum abdominal pain since 7 months. An L-defined fungating mass lesion with epicenter in the cervix with the involvement of the uterus and lower one-third of vagina with extension into adjacent parametrium and hematometra is seen, suggesting of stage 3B. A 54-year-old female patient came with the chief complaints of bleeding per vagina, abdominal pain since one year. Here we can see heterogeneously altered signal intensity lesion with its epicenter predominantly in the cervical region with its extension into body of uterus, invasion of the posterior wall of the bladder, infiltrating the left ureter, causing the mild to moderate hydroureteronephrosis suggesting of stage 4a. A 40-year-old female patient came with the chief complaints of abdominal pain and bleeding per vaginum since 2 months. 
Here, a well-defined heterogeneous altered signal intensity lesion showing diffusion restriction noted involving the cervix extending superiorly into the lower uterine myometrium, vaginal fornices, and lower one-third of the vagina, adjacent parametrial invasion in the right lateral and the posterior walls of the cervix, focal loss of fat planes with the posterior wall of the bladder, suggesting of stage 4A. Discussion. In general, cervical carcinoma is better defined at T2 weighted imaging, but small tumors may be more readily identified by their early enhancement after injection of gadopentate dimeglumine. The size of the tumor, whether greater or lesser than 4 cm, has a great impact on choice of therapy. Good correlation between MR imaging findings and macroscopic measurements. T2 weighted imaging may overestimate the size of the lesion due to inflammation and edema. The shape and direction of the growth should be noted because they are important for brachytherapy planning. Conclusion Sensitivity of the MRI to detect the stage 4 is 100% and is more followed by the stage 2 87.5% and stage 3 77.7%. However, there is no role of MRI in stage 1 tumors in the present study. Here are the references I took for the paper presentation. Thank you.